Happy Arvo. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. How you guys doing? Today, I woke up, I was like, what am I going to react to? I typed into Google, Australian heroes. And the very first man right here, Don Bradman. I'm like, who is that? I don't know who that is. I mean, there's some familiar faces on this random Google list, but I don't know who this is, Don Bradman. Well, it turns out he's evidently, or I don't know, considered by many to be the greatest cricket batsman of all time. And even by some, like Shane Warne, to be the greatest sports person in history of the world. That's pretty remarkable. Apparently, he was the greatest batsman of all time with a batting average of 99.94. 99.94, which is kind of just comical when you look at, you know, the next highest on the list, 61. Obviously, that's phenomenal. Also an Aussie. AC Vogues. I don't know how to pronounce that. But, you know, 61, 61, 60, 60, 60. All amazing batting averages, apparently. I don't know that much about cricket. But then you get 99.9. .9. What? Okay, that's insane. So he scored 99.9 .9 runs for every time he was out. If only he could have got point. Oh, six more. <laughs> he could have made the triple digits. But 99.94, which, according to these charts, a range from 20 to 40 is considered average. Anything above 50 is exceptional. So the dude is a certified Australian legend. And will you join me today on just taking a little bit of a dive into who he was? Let's do it. So there are entire channels dedicated to this man including, you know, the Bradman Museum. Apparently he has his own museum. This guy is basically like the Babe Ruth of cricket, I guess you could say. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Babe Ruth, but he's basically considered the GOAT, at least for his time, of baseball. This dude is the Babe Ruth of cricket. And that might be doing him an injustice. You know, maybe Babe Ruth is the Don Bradman of baseball. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is... Don Bradman and How I Play Cricket from the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia. And this is the first wicket he ever defended. A big... What the hell is he swinging? ...and tank. Here as a kid, he used to bounce the ball and then try to hit it on its return with a single cricket stump. You can imagine how that ball bounced from the round surface of the tank as full of angles as Euclid's pet hedgehog. Bradman never knew which way that ball was going to twist and dart next, and trying to follow its flight gave him an eye like a gimlet and wrist like Quicksilver. <laughs> like Quicksilver. Oh my god, this is awesome. This is a true hero origin story. Perhaps another young... I love that this method, this like just super simple method growing up, is what, you know, it translates. It's amazing just how that works, how that can translate into a skill beyond anybody else's in the world. Bradman may learn these secrets and practice them at his own tank. And there's something about the grind, you know what I mean, that he put in doing this at his childhood home or wherever it was, that you can't teach it, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't learn that at, at, a, at, a, at a cricket school necessarily. There's something special about the fact that he just wanted it so bad, he went out and did it himself every day, probably for hours. Trying to hit a ball with a stump like this would seem about as hopeless as catching sharks with a safety pin. But Bradman never gave up. And one day, he found he simply couldn't miss. So that later on, this is insane. When they gave him a real bat like this to use, it must have seemed ridiculously easy. Okay, there it is. I was like, a real bat like that. It must have seemed there we go. Ridiculously easy for him to hit everything that came along. Apparently. 
You gotta love these old timey videos. Nobody was in a rush. You know what I mean? The, the attention spans were exquisite. Just take a five second pause between everything we say. And compared to a ball bounced from a round tank, Grimmett's corkscrews seemed a gift. A boy who is used to batting like this can afford to smile at demon bowlers. But come for a walk, and Don Bradman will reveal to you yet another secret of his early cricket. Bradman is one of the finest fieldsmen in the world today. Oh, he's a good fieldsman too. Here's the university where he was trained, a paling fence. And no cricketer ever throws wicketer balls than a paling fence. At the bottom of the fence, you will see a curved rail. Against this rail, for days on end, Bradman would hurl a golf ball and then try to catch it as it came whizzing back. Of course, he has an admiring audience in the grandstand. Hello, Dad. But if you stick at this sort of practice long enough, the day will come when you'll be able to catch anything from measles to a seagull. I don't mean to be corny. But kind of like that guy just said, it's like, if you really want something bad enough, you know, somebody's got to be the greatest in the world. Somebody's got to do it. And uh, Mr. Don Bradman decided, I'm that guy. And he really clearly wanted it, and he just did it. Whatever it took. Go. So that was a pretty uh, ins inspiring origin story from Mr. Don Bradman. That was awesome. I'm curious what a com couple comments say. Goat is the most overused term in sport. This man is undeniably the greatest of all time. <laughs> this is the real classic masterclass by a legend. All right, now I've got from the Bradman Museum. Um, I don't know what this is. I guess this is his last, last innings ever, 1948. All I know is it's got four and a half million views. That's really why I'm watching it. It's got a ton of views, so there's some kind of historical significance here, and I just want to see him in action a little bit. There's not a whole lot of good footage of it, because it's a long time ago, but this is something. Enter Don Bradman, who got a great ovation. Then a special cheer on the field. Ollie's bowling and Don playing perhaps his last test innings here. The test innings, that's something I was reading about. And apparently the games, I know there's different formats of cr cricket. And there's one that can last like days. But back in these days, they lasted forever. <laughs> like a game of Quidditch, it might never end. The second ball, a googly got it. Well, it isn't often you get a big hand when you make a duck. But this was different. People were fancy back then. What happened? Okay, here's a career overview. Known as the little bloke to his contemporaries, Don Bradman was a phenomenon. In a first-class career lasting 21 years and three months, Bradman managed 21 years. to score a century once every three innings and averaged an astonishing 95 point. I need to know what a century is. If a player scores 100 runs in any given game. So he would do that and then only get out once. <laughs> One four on average. Four. While playing in the Sheffield Chill for both New South Wales and South Australia, he averaged 110.19 and his undefeated 452 against Queensland in 1930 was the highest of his 37 double centuries. The Don was a gifted all-round sportsman who excelled at tennis and golf and uh -huh. consistently strove for perfection. Having averaged 139.14 in England in 1930 and a staggering 201.50 against South Africa in 1931-32, England controversially devised the infamous bodyline tactics to try and curb his dominance. That's something I'm looking up here next. I've got it pulled up right here. Beloved by crowds in Australia and England, Bradman was also a renowned captain, selector, administrator, and an expansive thinker on the game. I swear, this dude could have started a cult. I mean, this dude, he was the man. And okay, to round it out, this was some kind of controversy, as they alluded to in that last video. The body line. 
So let's see here. The body line, also known as the fast leg theory bowling, was a cricket, cricketing tactic devised by the English cricket team. It was designed to combat the extraordinary batting skill of Don Bradman. <laughs> That's, in, that's incredible. You have a whole tactic designed just for you. A body line delivery was one in which the cricket ball was bowled at pace aimed at the body of the batsman and the expectation that when he defended himself with his bat, a resulting deflection w w could be caught by one of several fielders deliberately placed on the leg side. Hmm. I mean, if it works against Don Bradman, it seems like maybe you should just do that against everybody. Right? At the time, no helmets and no upper body protective gear was worn, and critics of the tactic considered it intimidating and physically threatening in a game traditionally supposed to be uphold conventions of sportsmanship. The England's team's use of the tactic was perceived by some both in Australia and England as so overly aggressive or even unfair. It caused a controversy that rose to such a level that it threatened diplomatic relations between the two countries before the situation was gone. Oh my god. Okay, let's see it. Faced with possibly Australia's strongest ever batting lineup, including Ponsford, Woodfull, McCabe, and Don Bradman in full flow, England committed Harold Larwood, fast and accurate, to deliberately attack the batsman's body rather than the stumps. The body line blitz brought the ashes into England's keeping again by a margin of four to one. But it left a very nasty taste. Eighteen months later. Bodyline was banned, Bradman was in full command, and for the next 20... They hit him in the head there. Full command... Oh my God. ...banned, Bradman was in full command, and for the next 20... Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is bad sportsmanship for sure. Of course, this, you know, something needed to be done about this. That kind of ruins the game, it seems like to me. Just, to, I'm, not, I'm not a cricket expert, but you can't just be throwing the ball at the batter. Same with baseball. You can't just throw it at the batter. You'll get thrown out for that if you do it on purpose um, too many times. Um, yeah, that's insane. Was in full command. That hurt. Body line was banned. I'm just trying to see if this hits his head. Bradman was in full command. Can't tell. But. And for the next 20 years or so, England couldn't find a dominating pair of bowlers and they couldn't win a test series. Wow. What an amazing legacy Mr. Don Bradman has. Shout out to the GOAT. Apparently he passed away at 92 years old. He got to see the uh, 21st century. That's pretty cool. The Don. No, not Donald Trump. Don Bradman. Now I know. The Don. That is amazing. That was a lot of fun. Very interesting to hear about. I love sports, so learning about sports heroes like that, very cool. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.